As far as North Korea is concerned, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't like to talk about what I have planned, but I have some pretty severe things that we're thinking about. That doesn't mean we're going to do them. I don't draw red lines. We're very prepared, but I think it's important not to take the idea of military action on the Korean Peninsula or war lightly. And this is a situation in which we need to get North Korea and China in a corner and not put our president in a corner. The North Korea situation very tense tonight as talks continue and talks about what to do next. Let's talk about some of those challenges facing the U.S. military tonight. Retired U.S. Navy Admiral Robert Natter is former commander of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet. He joins us tonight. Admiral, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brett. This is obviously a very tense situation. What's your take on what the North Koreans have done, what they're going to do? Well, it's obvious that they've developed uh, a missile delivery system, and the most recent test was a test of an ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, it had a very high trajectory. Uh, the apex was 1,600 miles or so, and they probably did that on purpose so as not to violate uh, airspace uh, of their neighbor, Japan. And as far as the timeline of being able to be effective with that and also the other component, which is miniaturizing a nuclear bomb on that missile, do we have a timeline? Well, I would say it's very short, if not immediate. My take is that they've tested five nuclear devices successfully. That's the long pole in the, tit, uh, in the uh, tent, technologically. Miniaturizing it is not as technologically uh, uh, difficult as getting the devices to go. We've seen pictures of Kim Jong-un uh, standing before encapsulated uh, devices that he called nuclear weapons. We have to take him to his word in this kind of a threat. So understanding that talk is, is what the, the preferred method now right. and pressure, um, and, and we can talk about that in a minute, but military options as far as what the U.S. can do if pushed to that moment. Well, we have the ability to prevail in North Korea. There's no doubt about that. Uh, as a seven, former 7th Fleet commander, I was directly involved in the war plans uh, should it come to that end. Uh, the reality is we don't want that because it would be ugly. For example, uh, in the three-year Korean War from 1950 to 1953, we lost 54,000 U.S. military personnel there. In the war on terrorism for the last 16 and a half years, we've lost a total of 6,800, just to put all that in context. So could we take out their missiles, considering that they're moving them around? Uh, what, what specific military options? Well, we have the ability to uh, put a spotlight on North Korea and track, uh, to a great extent, things that they're doing. Uh, and if it came to uh, uh, conflict, we would focus every asset on the North Korean peninsula, and it would be ugly. Now, we see the celebration after this launch uh, from North Korea. What about the other track? And this is the pressure track. We heard Nikki Haley at the U.N. talking about uh, not only pressuring China, but also anyone who helps North Korea in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's the exact appropriate approach. Uh, the sanctions that we've had over the last 20 years have been porous, to say the least. They've been half-hearted. We haven't enforced them, and that's the reality. I mean, you have other countries moving stuff in there. Exactly, and so sanctions can be imposed on them. Sanctions can be imposed on shipping companies, on banks, uh, on, on companies that are selling them to them. Uh, we need to have those kinds of sanctions, certainly going to that extent and that effort before we ever go to combat. How, if you were to put a percentage on it, and I know it's tough, mm -hmm the percentage that we would be involved in some kind of military action within the year with North Korea, what would you put it at? Well, I, I hate to guess about things like that. I, I would say that uh, at this point, based on what they're doing and how far along they are with their technology, I would put it at uh, less than 50 percent. But if they continue on this trajectory, that percentage is going to climb. Because the threat is direct. I mean, yes. it's not, it's not make-believe. We have 40,000 troops 
based in Korea. We have another 50,000 based in Japan, along with their families. When we put those people at risk, uh, this is serious business for us. Finally, uh, Admiral, one of the bases you used to command was Guantanamo Bay. We just did this story about possibly repopulating Gitmo. Your thoughts about that? Well, Guantanamo Bay is the perfect pe place to have this sort of uh, a prison. The idea that we're going to bring these prisoners potentially to the United States and say, oh, we'll just throw them in a, a supermax prison. Well, what about the surroundings? What about the uh, communities that surround those prisons? Uh, we have brought a couple of these folks back and put them in prisons. We put one in the uh, naval prison in Norfolk, Virginia. I can tell you there was enhanced security and there were increased costs associated with that. And that was for one prisoner. So you think it's a good idea? I think it's a very good idea because of its isolation. Uh, they're not going to swim home. Uh, they're not going to escape, and indeed, no one would ever attempt to come in and free them. That's not going to happen at Guantanamo Bay. Admiral Natter, we appreciate your time. Thank you, sir.